Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brendan Bias from Checkit.com and welcome to another Tutorial Tuesday. In this week's tutorial, we are going to be creating some lava. Cause who doesn't like fiery lava-like stuff? Or, yeah, yeah, I, I have no idea where I was going with that. But anyway guys, we're going to be uh, creating some lava in this week's tutorial. And before I show you this, what I've uh, come up with, I will have to uh, get this off my chest. I did look at some other people's tutorials just to get a good idea of how to, you know, get the effect started. But um, I did end up finishing it on my own. So uh, just to give credit where credit's due, this is the tutorial that I got uh, a couple pointers from. It was made by Suck Monkey. I don't understand why you would name yourself Suck Monkey, but either way, this guy had a pretty uh, handy tutorial on how to uh, create some lava. Although, in my opinion, the ending effect kind of turned out kind of bleh. But either way, it helped me get to this, which is, in my opinion, freaking sweet. Just take a look at this freaking lava. It's just got some like like chunks of you know molten junk in it or I don't even know what the heck all this stuff even is when it comes to lava it's probably just like the cooler portions of the lava but either way it looks freaking epic and I just love how it turned out so I just want to share this with all you lovely people and all of our beautiful subscribers out there so what do you say we go ahead and get going with this effect so let's make our new documents and you can name this as you want I'm gonna name this lava tutorial and I'm going to do a different width and height. I'm going to have 4,000 by 2,000. Normally I have 1920 by 1080, but let's try something a little bit different this time. And we're going to have the resolution at 72 pixels per inch, RGB color mode, and the background contents are going to be white. So let's click OK, hit Control or Command-0 to fit the canvas to our uh, screen here. And let's go ahead and start by double clicking our background layer. And we're going to name this our clouds and hit OK there. And before you apply any filters, I'm going to do a quick favor for you guys and show you how to turn on all of the filters in the menu here because we are going to be using some stuff in artistic and stylize later on. So if you want to follow along, here's what you're going to have to do. Go to edit go to your preferences and under your preferences go to the plugins and make sure you have show all filter gallery groups and names turned on in this little filter section here and you should be set to go okie dokie so once you've got that set and you have your foreground and your background color set to the default black and white which if you didn't know you can do by hitting the letter D on your keyboard now we can go to filter and go to render and choose clouds and that should make some cool little clouds for us but I do want to make these a little bit darker, so let's bring up our curves by hitting Control or Command M, and that's M as in mic, if you guys don't uh, understand that. And for some reason, these are not coming up. So let's go to Image, Adjustments, and let's go to our curves, because for some reason the shortcut is not working right now. So for this, let's just uh, bring our midtones down into the right. So somewhere around there looks pretty good to me, and I will hit OK. And next up, I'm going to duplicate the clouds twice by hitting Control or Command J on our keyboard. So we'll do that once and twice. And let's go back and rename the clouds copy as uh, plastic. And then we'll go to clouds copy 2, and we will rename that as, let's do emboss and then plastic and with the emboss plastic layer selected let's go to filter let's go to stylize and choose emboss and for this we'll set the angle to 90 degrees with a height of 3 pixels and amount cranked all the way up to 500 percent and we'll click OK and then we'll go to filter and then we'll go to artistic and choose plastic wrap and for this we'll have the highlight strength set to 16 a detail set to 9 and a smoothness of 6 and we'll click OK and we're gonna set this layer to overlay and then let's select our plastic layer and go to filter and let's choose the uh, the plastic wrap that we just used which you can go to filter plastic wrap or you can use control F on your keyboard and so that should apply like so and now we'll go to the blend mode and change this to linear dodge add and we'll change the fill of that down to 50 percent 
And so we're getting a pretty interesting looking effect here, but now we need some cool little colors and stuff to go with it. So for the time being, let's turn off the plastic and emboss plastic layers. And let's go to the clouds layer and let's go to our adjustments and add a color balance on top of these. And let's start off by going to our shadows and we'll crank the reds up to 100. And let's crank the yellows to about, uh, let's do 34. And then we'll go to our midtones. Once again, cranking the reds all the way to 100. And then this time putting the yellows to about, uh, let's do 55. And then for the highlights, we're just gonna put the yellows up to 55. So right about there. Now next up, let's go ahead and turn on the plastic and emboss plastic layers. Let's take the color balance and duplicate that once again with Control or Command J. Let's move this color balance copy up above our plastic and we're going to create a clipping mask from this. So to do that, we're just gonna click this little box icon that has a downwards pointing arrow next to it and that should clip it so it's only applied to our plastic layer. Uh, one more thing for the color balance, let's make sure we have that selected and we'll put the fill down to 30%. Okie dokie. So let's go back to our emboss plastic layer and we'll duplicate that with Control or Command J. And we're going to set this to a blend mode of vivid light and we're going to change that down to 50%. And with the emboss plastic copy layer selected, holy crap that's weird to say, let's go ahead and bring up our... Um, our curves by hitting Control or Command M. And once again, for some reason, the uh, the shortcut is not working for me, so I have to go to the curves by hand. And for this, we're gonna kind of um, mellow out the, the blacks and the whites. So to do that, it sounded kind of racy, didn't it? Huh. <laughs> so anyway, what we're gonna do for that is click and drag the black point up to an output of 20. And then we're going to go and click the white output and bring that down to an output of 235. And so all that's going to do is mellow out the, the lows and the highs for the, the copied layer here. All right, so now just to recap, we have our clouds layer, which is just set to normal. We have the color balance layer, which I already showed you all the settings for. We have the plastic layer set to linear dodge at a fill of 50%. We have our copied color balance, which is set to a fill of 30% and is clipped to the plastic layer. The embossed plastic is set to overlay, and the copied embossed plastic is set to vivid light with a fill of 50%. Whew, that's quite a lot, ain't it? But we still have more to go. The next thing we're going to do is create a new layer, which is a merged copy of the entire canvas. And to do that, we're going to use a shortcut, which is Control, Alt, Shift, E. And so we should have this new little layer, and uh, let, we're not going to do anything fancy to this. We're just going to desaturate it by hitting Control shift u or Command-Shift-U if you're on a Mac. And we are also going to duplicate that by hitting Control or Command-J. So we have Layer 1 and Layer 1 Copy. For the time being, let's turn off Layer 1 Copy and just go to Layer 1. And for this, let's go back and apply our Curves adjustments to this. And let's bring in these... Uh, the black input somewhere into the uh, the middle area, so around 127-ish. And let's also go ahead and bring down some of the remaining midtones uh, over there. And so that way we should get this cool kind of star field effect. And with that we can hit OK. And let's go to our channels, and we are going to control click or command click the thumbnail for the RGB channel to load it up as a selection. And then we'll go back to our layers, Let's create a new layer, and let's delete layer 1 that we had here. And we're going to fill in layer 2 with white. So uh, once again, that is Control or Command Backspace. Or you can bring up the fill by hitting Shift Backspace and choosing white under the use for the contents. So let's go ahead and deselect by hitting Control or Command D on our keyboard here. And let's rename layer 2 as our glow. And for this, let's apply a outer glow. And for the blend mode of this outer glow, we're going to set that to linear burn. Let's put the opacity down to 20%. And for the color of this, let's move this slider just over to the right to this slightly yellow color. And then bring this down until it's more of an orange. And we'll click OK. And for this, let's set the spread to 1 and the size at 100 pixels. And let's also change the range to 100%. 
And the purpose of this outer glow is simply to add in a little bit of saturation here because it does seem a little bit drowned out. All right, so next up, let's go back to our layer one copy and turn that on. And let's go ahead and invert this by hitting Control or Command I on our keyboard. And this should be the uh, overall effect that we're getting here. And let's go once again and apply our curves adjustments. And for this, all we're going to do is uh, bring in the black slider to about uh, an input of 30, maybe a little bit more. And we're going to bring down our midtones like so and then bring back some of the highlights up here. So we'll have this pretty intense looking little set of, uh, I don't even know what the heck this would be considered. It's just freaking weird looking, all right? <laughs> Work with me. So let's go ahead and hit okay to apply that. And we are going to go to file and choose save as, and we are going to name this lava tutorial displace. And we're going to turn on save as copy and we'll click save. So now let's delete the layer one copy. And then once again, let's merge everything into a new layer by hitting Control, Alt, Shift, E, or Command, Option, Shift, E. And we are going to rename this as our Displace. So let's go to Filter, and we're gonna go to Distort and choose Displace. And we'll keep the default values of 10, 10, Stretch to Fit, and Repeat Edge Pixels, and click OK. And the file we're going to use is the Lava Tutorial Displace Map that we just saved, and we'll click Open. And so what you'll notice is that this applies a really interesting displacement on top of our effect here. And some of you might like it, some of you might not. I think it's a pretty cool little addition, and it kind of makes it look a little more rocky and just a little bit more lava-like to me. All right, so one more thing that we can do to make this look a little bit nicer is to duplicate our displace layer. So we'll hit Control or Command J, and we're going to name this as our contrast. And once again, let's desaturate this by hitting Control Shift U or Command Shift U if you're on a Mac. And then we'll go to Filter. Let's go to Blur and choose a Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to set that to a radius of eight pixels and click OK. And for this, I'll just set that to a blend mode of soft light and it will put the fill down to about 80%. And so if you turn that off and on, it just kind of darkens up some of those uh, little chunks of rock and things of that sort. So after having a whole bunch of fun, let's go ahead and take a look at our bad boy here. All right, so I think we did a pretty freaking good job here, guys. So I know I went through that pretty fast. I was trying to keep the length of the tutorial down to a minimum. So if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask me. I will be happy to help you guys out. But uh, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you made anything cool out of it, uh, just let me know what it looks like. Maybe you make a pretty cool uh, sun or something of that sort. That's actually kind of the idea that inspired this. I was trying to make a lava engulfed sun, but it didn't really turn out good. So I just settled with this. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed the tutorial, once again, just leave your comments or like the video and share with others. You know, all that kind of stuff helps us out in the long run. That's all I have for you guys for today, and I will see you guys next Tuesday. Peace out.